Let's see what the boys were up to. Inflation hit 10%. Oh, let's send this. Huh? Highest paying professions? <laughs> check this out. Let's check reels. Oh, I should have studied graphic design. Check this out. Oh, that's cool. Oh, fuck, I need to work. To understand our present, we need to travel back in time. More precisely, to 1950s. In the 1950s, researchers became aware of the gradual expansion of non-agricultural, non-industrial sections of advanced industrial economies. Seeing this change, the term post-industrial was often used to describe this economy. It implied that the main features of the new economy was not understood so it was defined as the old economy being replaced. Early studies in this post-industrial economy mistakenly saw it as a service economy. Mac Club, or Match Club, I don't know how you say it, was the first person to use this term in 1962, knowledge-based industry, to describe it. He found that by 1959, knowledge-producing occupations had surpassed the other occupations in terms of numbers. Later on, in 1977, Mark Uri Porat and Rubin wrote a nine-volume dissertation that measured and estimated the size of the economy. They described this emerging sector as the information economy. This was the first time the term information economy was used, as digital technology made the reproduction of text, images, audio, video, and other information over unlimited generations, the information economy grew rapidly. Fast forward to the present, the boom is digital content and information has led to a fight between companies. <laughs> but not for the control of information, but rather your attention. The attention economy is a system that revolves primarily around paying, receiving and seeking what is most intrinsically limited and not replaceable by anything else, namely the attention of other human beings. As attention is both scarce and measurable, it can become not simply a commodity like others, but a kind of capital. See it as clicks, downloads, likes, views, followers, sharings, etc. All of this can then be monetized for the likes of how many followers you have, how many likes, how many clicks, etc. Just look at the Kardashians, they earn like 150k for each post. Just crazy. Then some key players like Meta, Netflix and YouTube want to hook you up to their platform. They try to catch as much of your focus as possible. Technology has been engineered to hook us. Not to keep us entertained or blandly serve our best interest, but to increase the inventory of ad space a company can sell. Just like a drug dealer tries to hook people on their dope and make you depending on it, companies want to hook you on their platform to make money. By using information like the time we spend on a site, our click-through rate, and other measures I cannot even know, companies can control us, and the more we participate, the more powerful their control becomes. The repetitive use of an app and the tailored ads we see, they just don't work anymore. Sadly, this has led to companies to take drastic measures to make you stay hooked on the platform. Did you know that the endorphins released at the moment of texting are equal to the endorphins we release when we climax? That means that companies have been able to recreate a device that we touch around 200 times a day that makes us feel the same as the most intimate you can get. Just think about that. From the sound the app makes when you get a new message, to how it autoplays the next message, everything is connected and the scarce allocation of your attention is what these companies are able to sell. These companies have a whole team of engineers behind thousands of thousands of dollars to spend on, and you wonder, why is it difficult for me to stop using social media, let alone your phone? The apps we use on a day-to-day -day are eternally updating with new information. It's the FOMO, or leaving someone message idle, or falling behind on emails. This makes us check constantly throughout the day on our phone. 
It takes us more than 20 minutes to get back into the flow once we've been interrupted. So even just one little look can have a huge consequence for our focus. Since we are constantly distracted, it's impossible to achieve the conditions for concentrated deep work and achieving a desired state of productivity. And that's if we ever get to do our work, since most of the time you get an answer quickly or then you want to quickly check Instagram or Facebook, see what your friends are up to, and then all of a sudden, oops, 40 minutes have passed. Given the fact that we check our phone around 221 times a day or every four minutes, you are not only restricting yourself to being productive, but you are also not living your life how you want to live it. But it's not all dark in this economy. Your ability to look up reviews on restaurants, having a map, planning your holidays, are all in one device. Being able to gain instant access to information that you would otherwise not have to. One of the main things social media has done is give a voice to a lot of people that have been looked over in the past. The internet allows us to be in contact with everyone that's ever been of a life. Think of it as a high school yearbook, but of your whole life. We can share opinions, connect, talk with people across the world. It allows us to work from anywhere in the world and continue working even if there's a pandemic going on. The internet has let us stay connected with one another and continue our lives. The internet is part of our lives. Our phone is like an extension of ourselves that carries everything we need, our money, our camera, our photos, our agenda, our computer, Everything is in our pocket, but at what cost? Your attention. It's up to you whether you want to quit social media, to restrict how much you use it, to continue using it, or how to use it. This is just going to get worse and worse. Technology will improve, and more companies will be created with the sole purpose of retaining your attention. Now virtual reality and the metaverse is growing and we're going to end up like Wally stuck to a chair with a screen full of advertisement. Will our IQ decrease due to the number of advertising shows to us? I don't know. It will not be up to us. We'll have to live and see if these companies will go for the profit seeking attitude or to one where they put the person first, where you can post an app and go on holiday and that won't affect your statistics, your income or your online life. Just remember that you own your attention, not the company making profits from it.